Have you had enough of Mayor McGinn? A lot of people have. That's why they started the Recall Mayor McGinn campaign. It's on Facebook. And Michael Cornell is with us tonight. Right here on Public Exposure, I'm Stan Emmert. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, Stan. It's a very brave thing that anybody does to take on City Hall. Well, um, thank you for saying so. I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that here's the way that you reach and get more information. It's recallmcginn at groups.facebook.com. For those of you who are Facebook users, and I think there are 600 million of us, uh, that's, uh, it's an easy way to get. Just put in uh, Recall Mayor McGinn and you'll find it. Okay, there's just a ton of comments on this. You've got mm -hmm. how many people in the group now? There are uh, between seven and eight hundred. I think we've had as many as a thousand. There were some people that dropped out because, um, for a couple of reasons, there were uh, uh, too many comments and they didn't know how to filter their comments, yeah. so uh -huh. they were getting uh, hundreds of emails a day. So we did have some people drop out for that reason. Right at the moment, I think we're around 750. Wow, that's that's an awful lot because it was just a couple of weeks ago, it was... 70. 70. Yes. yes. We're going to find out why it's grown so <laughs> fast, but let's just get right into it right now. And so here's a, a quote right from uh, Real McGinn at groups.facebook.com. Are you tired of Mayor McGinn trying to block, slow, or delay projects, laws, and decisions that affect Seattle residents within his last-minute changes or taking a side on an issue that is opposite to, to what the majority of Seattle residents want? Is that the campaign in a nutshell? I think that's a huge part of it. And what's interesting about the people that are joining us, a lot of them have been McGinn supporters in the past, and even a lot of them uh, support some of his, his uh, policies, um, but they are fed up with the way that he is performing in office. As an example, there are a number of people that <clears throat> have joined us who um, really don't want the tunnel to, to move forward, but uh, in reality they understand that the agreements have been made and it's time to move on and, and allow this to happen, and the obstructionist actions of our mayor are not productive for anyone. Okay, well, let's let's go then to uh, getting this thing launched. Uh, the campaign to recall Seattle mayor is launched, and this is from NorthwestCableNews.com, and here's a quote from it. It says, the mayor is spending $10 million to replace car lanes with bike paths, and the reduction in the number of vehicle travel lanes is referred to as a road diet. But we live in Seattle, and mm -hmm. we are environmentally conscious, and so we need more bike lanes, don't we? I think that uh, we need to, to really make our uh, roads work for everyone and that includes people with cars and the fact is the majority of citizens in Seattle uh, today still need their cars we do have one of the most spread out cities in the United States we don't all live on Capitol Hill we don't all live downtown or we can't all walk to our jobs and we don't all have uh, good bus routes to our jobs uh, near me there will be a light rail station but that's not going to be there for 10 years and I have a lot of places to go in the next 10 years and I need my car to do it and the reality is uh, many of us in the 21st century don't have jobs where we simply take one bus downtown and sit at a cubicle for eight hours and take the same bus back home at five o'clock. Many of us are like me. This morning I, I needed to start out near Green Lake. At nine o'clock I needed to be in downtown Bellevue. This afternoon I needed to be back uh, in Maple Leaf. And here I am this evening in North Seattle. And the reality is that is the way a lot of us have to live our lives. And the idea, the um, uh, the idea that we're all going to live in this Logan's Run world where we simply uh, have these uh, uh, lives that are so simplistic that work on a computer model, it just doesn't work for the reality of most of Seattle citizens. Let's go to MyNorthwest.com. This is um, Cairo for a lot of, uh, a lot of people. Would, and this is Cairo Radio, that is. Would you vote to recall Seattle Mayor Mike McGinn? Here's a quote from the column itself. Uh, and it says, so far the poll reveals 80% say yes and 20% say no. 80% of, of a poll says get rid of them again. It's now. pretty amazing. I actually started a, the first thing I did with this was start a Facebook question uh, a number of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that's all I thought it was going to be. I, I wondered how many people that I knew would uh, vote to recall the mayor and how many wouldn't. And my feeling was that it would be somewhere around 50-50. And I was just wondering what side of of that line the majority would fall on and what I found that the overwhelming majority said yes and the people that I know by and large are pretty liberal people so this is not a conservative against liberal thing it's uh, people fed up with the mayor 
Okay, everybody watching the show is going wants this question asked, and, mm -hmm. and the question is, what's in it for you? Making the city better for for myself and the uh, the other six hundred thousand people that live in the city. Okay, let's. I go. do not. I uh, I don't have any other vested interest in this. If you're anything, not running for office, you're I'm not running, running for council, you're not running am, for mayor. No, I'm not running for anything. In fact. Uh, the only public office of any type that I've ever held is chairman of Green Lake Community Council and before that vice chairman. And uh, my term is up in a few months and the bylaws don't even allow me to run again. So I'm not running for anything. I s am simply a citizen who needs to get around town. I represent clients in my real estate business and they need to get around town. And a lot of them are finding it very, very frustrating to deal with the what's happening to our city. Another reality is that as Sally Clark said to me, we live in an hourglass-shaped city, and mm -hmm. to uh, eliminate one of only two major north-south highways in an hourglass-shaped city just doesn't work. We Losing Highway 99 is just not practical. And even so many people who are against the tunnel, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. have realized that you know that is a settled uh, argument. That is over with. Even the mayor himself, when he was running right before the campaign ended, he said, you know, I realize, uh, and I'm not quoting exactly because I don't have his quote in front of me, but it's all, uh, I'm sure that you have quotes here. He uh, said that he would not block the tunnel. And that has been his biggest effort since he's been in office is blocking We're the tunnel. We're used to politicians making promises, um, you know, when they're candidates and then when they get in office, then they you know, say something different. Yes, We're used I, to that. I, that was pointed out to me by Dory Munson when I did his show. And he said, shouldn't you just expect that? And I realize that politicians lie and politicians make promises they don't keep. That doesn't mean that we have to accept it. Okay, well, let's go back to the Facebook page. This is from a commenter, Kevin Nolan. And he says, uh, we should levy an initiative to put, or we, yeah, we should levy an initiative to put in a licensing tax on bicycles. Car owners pay for these bike lanes. It's about time bike riders pony up. And so my question is, is this campaign car owners versus bike riders? I think there are a lot of people who feel that way. But interestingly, there are an awful lot of responsible citizens who are cyclists who have joined our effort and believe that the direction that the mayor is taking us and some of the uh, a mi minority of cyclists in Seattle who completely flagrantly disregard the law uh, and basically have created uh, what one uh, commenter called living roadblocks, they're, they're hurting the city and they're hurting the, the lives of the citizens who live here. Interestingly enough, this comes from the Cascade Bicycle Club, and actually in 2007, and they were talking about a Mercer Island update. It says, where is the enforcement and what is the stop? And then they, I thought, found this really interesting because they, they come on and they've got a map of where heavy, heavy enforcement of the law, avoid if possible. This does not say to me that they are advocating for their members to obey the law. It certainly sounds that way. And there are certainly a, a, a high number of cyclists in Seattle who don't care anything about the law. I don't want to claim that they're the majority, mm -hmm. and I really would like this not to be a, a bicycle against car thing, because as I said, we do have a lot of avid cyclists who are responsible, who have mm -hmm. actually joined us, and we're like the mayor out. Hmm. And well, the, the, the mayor's a cyclist himself. We got a picture of it, sure too. Is. Near a stop sign. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it's nice that he actually stopped for that stop sign. You may remember that there was a recent news article, he was being interviewed by a television reporter. He got on his bicycle and raced through a stop sign without stopping. And the reporter yelled at him about that and he just laughed and waved back at the reporter. I think that sets an example that is completely inappropriate for the leader of our city to be setting for our citizens. Has he been responsive to your group? Has he reached out to you and said, you know, hey, I mean, I, I, I realize that we have some real serious differences. Can we talk this thing through? No, I have not heard from him. Uh, he did say to one reporter, uh, the, the first reporter that interviewed me, he said, well, that's interesting that, that uh, Michael Cornell, who is chairman of Green Lake Community Council, is uh, behind this effort because Green Lake Community Council voted for Streets for All Seattle, um, which is really a little bit of a distortion. Uh, for one thing, I'm not representing Green Lake Community Council in this effort. The, the council hasn't even had a meeting since this effort uh, uh, really took off. Um, the other thing is uh, trying to make it look like this is this is uh, car lovers who hate cyclists and, and um, car lovers who don't want great transit options in our city. That's not what this is. Okay, well, let's go back to the uh, to it itself, um, the Facebook page. 
This is from Douglas McElroy. He says, as a mid-50s man, I'm concerned that I'm being discriminated against because I can't ride a bike up big hills. Maybe we should lower the age of retirement or flatten all the hills. Time to say bye-bye to Mr. Um, Sprockets. <laughs> um, it's cute, but the other reality is that every city in the United States, the population is aging. Mm -hmm. And, you know, can people in their mid-50s ride bikes? A lot of them can. Right. But a lot of them can't. And right. we do have a bunch of hills. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do you have more comments like this? Do you have more people saying things that are a little bit funny but also a lot true? Well, I'll tell you something that's kind of sad. There's a citizen who, who came to me uh, in the Green Lake area in her 70s, came to me in tears and said, you know, I've lived in Seattle for 75 years and it's becoming harder and harder for me to get around Seattle by car. There's nowhere to park. I can't do the buses. My my physical condition will not allow me to sit out at a bus station, at a, at a bus stop. Some of the bus stops don't have benches, they don't have um, covers. Her life just does not allow her to get around by our inadequate transit system. Do I have to move to Renton now that I'm 75 years old? Can I no longer live in the city? And I talk to a lot of seniors who feel that way, that we are uh, forcing them out of, out of the city. There is a certain element of ageism, I think, that's happening in Seattle politics right now. And uh, it's, it's really rather distressing. Is there a stereotypical member of your group? No. In fact, the member, membership is incredibly uh, diverse. Uh, myself, I consider myself a, a fairly progressive, uh, left-leaning liberal Democrat. I was having a discussion with uh, another leader of the group tonight, and he's about as far right as you can get. So we really do scan uh, the, the, the entire horizon as far as political leanings. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back to the Facebook page. And this is from Vincent Kovar. He says, though the bike issue is aggravating, it seems to me that the real problem is where our, as in the majority of taxpayers, money is being spent and how it's being spent. Is the war on cars, parking, and business good for Seattle? That's really well said. Mm -hmm. But I gotta ask this. <clears throat> do, uh, do most of your members seem to believe that there is a war on cars in Seattle? I think that a lot of our members do, and uh, a reporter recently asked the mayor, are you waging a war on cars in Seattle? And his response to the, the reporter on camera was, oh, that's a silly question. And I would agree with the mayor that that was a silly question because it is absolutely clear that he is waging a war on cars in Seattle. Where does this come from? I mean, seriously, if he, all he has to do is look and he would see that a huge, huge majority, probably uh, in excess of 95% of all trips taken in Seattle are in a car. Well, some of his followers say that that's actually the problem and they, their intentions are to make it harder to make those trips so that you'll get out of your car, uh, which I think is a flawed philosophy. Um, the last figures that I saw were that somewhere between uh, 81 and 85% of Seattle families own cars. I think that's quite a telling number. Mm -hmm. There are many people who would like not to have a car. I would like not to drive my mm -hmm. car a lot more. <clears throat> In fact, I do walk. I, I have the luxury of living within walking distance of at least two supermarkets, a drugstore, and a few other amenities. An awful lot of our citizens don't. And we are we're segregating our society. We have the people that live in the neighborhoods such as Capitol Hill or maybe the top of Queen Anne where, where you can actually get around without a car and do, uh, live a good portion of your life. And then we have the rest of the city, which is the majority of the city where we don't have those, those luxuries. So um, I think we'd all like to be able to get out of our cars more. And the reality is we don't have those options and just making it harder on us to have a car, to move a car around and to park it is not accomplishing anything. We'd like to have more transit options. I would like to have more opportunity to get out of my car. And they, the opportunities just aren't there. And simply making it harder to make those trips that you refer to isn't getting us there. All right, we're gonna take a very short break. We're very fortunate to have with us tonight Michael Cornell, who is with the Recall the Mayor campaign. Or, or, and you can go to the Facebook page, and let's go to it right now. Let me see, I'm gonna get the address up because we need to get that up pretty often. and. Recall McGinn at groups.facebook.com, and we will get that up often. Um, if you have questions for the group, the, the place to go is to the Facebook page. If you want to join, to go to the Facebook page. If you don't, then be sure to make your wishes known. But uh, this group is moving, and, um, well, let's just see more from Michael right now. Okay, the Elway poll.
Stuart Elway here runs uh, an entity here that's very well respected. March 29th, March 29th, again, it's several months ago, it says the Seattle Mayor McGinn's job performance rating is more than two to one negative. And this was not anything done by you guys, right? Correct. Did you guys exist on May March 29th? Uh, we may have existed, but I can tell you that on March 29th, I, this was completely off of my radar. All right, well, let's go to the first quote then. No issue has been more associated with Mike McGinn than the replacement for the Alaskan Way Viaduct. It's not helped him. 63% of all the mayor's poor job ratings come from voters who said the tunnels should be built. Okay, let's go to the next quote. Again, from the Elway poll, supporters of McGinn's preferred alternative, transit and surface streets, make up only 22% of the voters. Significantly, even 54% of those supposed uh, gave him a negative job rating. So even the ones who would have supported him the most are more than, and there's a majority against him. That's correct. We do have a lot of people in our group who, uh, who don't, did not want the, the tunnel built, and they find that the, the way the mayor is performing is simply embarrassing the city and is not productive. And uh, the last part of the quote is that uh, age doesn't matter a whole lot, with the exception of 70% of voters over 50 rate his job performance only as fair or poor, while 24% said excellent or good. So the older, more prevalent voter just doesn't like him right now. Uh, and then if we go to the next, it's a big graphic, uh, just shows, and again, this was March 29th. But there have been some changes since then. But I gotta ask you this, there are some more issues. Mm -hmm. I wanna go to this next graphic. Has Mayor McGinn done a good job of representing Seattle in the rest of the state? Absolutely not, he is a political outcast. There was a recent meeting that was pretty well publicized uh, that the governor was there, there were, there were leaders from all over the, the state, and it was a meeting about transportation, and he was an outcast. The, the, the members, the people that were in attendance just didn't even talk to him. I don't even think the governor takes his calls. He is not representing our city well. He is creating a credibility gap. We have agreements in place to move forward with the tunnel. We elect a new mayor who is then going to block it. What kind of credibility does, us, does that give the city of Seattle around the state of Washington. But isn't it normal uh, with our cascade curtain for Seattle to be not liked by anybody else? I think there is some of that element. There's the east of the mountains, west of the mountains thing that goes on. Um, I don't think it's ever been more prevalent than it is right now with this mayor. Hmm. Let's touch on something else we've, uh, we actually have already touched on it. Did the mayor break a campaign promise with regard to the tunnel? Um, I will tell you right up uh, hands, I'm not a tunnel fan. I am also not a fan of tearing down the viaduct. I think it is too vital uh, a, a thoroughfare for, for, for business, mm -hmm. for people. I love driving up and down it myself because I can look out and see great views. But if we're going to build the tunnel, let's get on with it. That is the point that an awful lot of people uh, have made. I personally like the viaduct. I enjoy driving on it. I'm going to miss it when it's gone. I do know that it's nearly 60 years old and it is very, very flawed. And the reality is that uh, if we don't take it down, we may have a little earth tremor that, that takes it down involuntarily. So it needs to be replaced one way or, or another. Does it need to be replaced with another viaduct? Does it need to be replaced with a tunnel? The decision has been made. And we have talked about this and argued about it and uh, uh, for years and years and years. And the, the argument was over. It's done and we need to move forward. The tunnel is what was agreed to. I personally would probably prefer that the viaduct remain and be perfect and, and, and suit our needs, but it doesn't. It's crumbling and it's going to fall. So it does need to be replaced. We do need to have a Highway 99 through Seattle. Um, but I thought that the mayor, and Mike McGinn himself as a candidate, and the mayor is protecting us by making sure that we, we Seattle citizens do not have to pay for cost overruns on a state highway. It's a smokescreen. There is nothing there that, that, to, that gives him uh, any cause to believe that that's what would happen. This is a state highway. What was the campaign promise that your group says he broke? Right before the campaign ended, he actually reversed his earlier stand. He, he did campaign all along against the tunnel. And right before the, the campaign ended, he uh, announced that he was changing his mind and that he would not block the tunnel if he were elected. He accepted the fact that the agreements were in place and that it was his job as mayor to move forward with those agreements. As soon as he took office, he went back on, on his word. Hmm. That, that has been the majority of his energy has been to fight the tunnel. 
This show uh, tonight is going to have a first for public exposure, and we've been on for 19 years. We've never quoted Mike, uh, Michael Medved before, but we're going to. Michael Medved, according to nor MyNorthwest.com, says the Seattle Mayor McGinn is the worst in U.S. history. Number one, he says he's completely isolated himself from anyone else in political life or city government. Number two, Medved says uh, the biggest traveled street corner in the state of Washington is where I-5 hits I-90 and right there under Pac Med, covered with graffiti and nothing has been done about it. Uh, and number three, McGinn's website uh, has three top priorities for his first term as mayor. One, more money for light rail, two, legalizing marijuana, and three, a nude beach in Seattle. Uh, I, I don't know that that can be topped, but is, is Medved right on those things? I think he's right. I don't, I don't see a flaw in that argument. Okay. Well, that said, let's move on then. <laughs> let's go back to the Facebook page. Michael Dunstan, McGinn ought to be named McGridlock, putting uh, State uh, Route 99 traffic on surface streets as pure lunacy. Uh, also, he seems to have a very anti-business outlook. By raising parking rates, he is going to encourage more people to go to South Center, Alderwood, and Bellevue Square. I am for a recall. Bring it on. How do business people respond to McGinn now? I think that's a pretty good reflection. Uh, there is... There's one business owner, as you uh, may know, who put up a banner yeah, and uh, was have that one. Uh, calling for people to get Mayor McGinn out of office. As far as shopping, the last time I went downtown to shop, my parking fee was $24. It was not, Whoa. it was $24 to park downtown and shop, and that was just for a few hours in an afternoon. It wasn't even all day. So was this a private parking lot? It was what used to be the Bon Marche parking lot, which is now, uh, has no, no longer has any relationship to Macy's. Um, and it was twenty-four dollars. The it is now easier for me personally to go to Bellevue Square and shop. And the reality is, I'm not going to do that on a bus. I'm not going to carry my packages on a bus. I guess the alternative might be to take a cab. And I think um, for a lot of us, uh, a cab might be where we're going to be forced to go if it becomes so so difficult to park in Seattle. That's not environmentally sound. Do we want no. our streets to look like Manhattan, where there are Taxi cabs driving around with no one in them, the taxi cab running, uh, usually a V8, V8 engine 24 7 with nobody there until they pick up a fare. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, well, let's go to Como News, and this might be the thing. Um, McGinn's office now is double checking Hiller's qualifications, and this is mm -hmm. the Cascade Bicycle Club guy who was hired. Yes, they, the he announced that after, uh, after our effort got started. And, oh. And uh, the, the Hiller hiring is really what ignited the energy behind the recall mayor Mike McGinn effort. That's what took us from 70 to 700 members and what uh, exploded our media coverage. And, and this quote seemed to be that on the one hand McGinn was saying that yes he checked him out but then he's saying no I didn't. Right. So did Mayor McGinn just not tell the truth? Okay, let's move on. We won't, <laughs> we won't make him answer that one. Okay, here's from the Seattle PI. A man angry over hiked parking rate uh, hangs a sign cursing the mayor and of course the curses we don't have that on the show. and But he does say this, we've got to start cutting from the top. I'm the American dream right here. I work hard every day. I work seven days a week. I'm the American dream. Whether he is the dream or not, does he have a legitimate point? I think he does. He, uh, the mayor is making it hard not only to do business in Seattle, but uh, to be a customer. One of the quotes that the mayor made to visiting uh, to a group of business people in Atlanta when representing our city at a conference was, that he actually told these people that Seattle is hostile to business. I think I don't think that is Mc, our mayor. Our mayor said that said to, that Seattle is hostile to business. Wow. So uh, to say something like that and represent our city in such a way is is absolutely deplorable. And then to go on to make it more hostile to business is even worse. Well, I want to go back to the Facebook page. This is very interesting here. David Gorin, I'm in tourism, and each cruise ship brings in $1.9 million. There are 190 scheduled cruise dockings this season. Did you know there's no office for tourism? Not $1 is spent to promote tourism, and uh, no is in charge. $100,000 would do a lot to promote downtown tourism versus a bike czar. And there's only a couple of minutes left in the mm -hmm. show. we got a lot more to cover, but mm -hmm. what I want to do is I want to find out what the process is from here. What's the recall process? Um, there needs to be um, a petition filed with the Secretary of State's office, and I actually have a list. I don't have the list with me now, but mm -hmm. we have created a list of where we need to go from here. We do need someone to step forward uh, to lead the group and make this happen. I have been asked to lead the group, and I can't do it. I have too many responsibilities. My 
my loyalties lie to my real estate clients and, and not primarily to this effort. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for someone to step forward and take charge and make the things happen. We do need to uh, have an official name. We need to uh, actually file a petition and file the, um, since a, it's a political campaign, any money that's involved will be very tightly looked at. Mm -hmm. I don't want to touch any money in any way, shape, or form. So there are some housekeeping things that need to be done. Uh, and that's that's what we're looking at doing next. When, what do you think your, is your timing on it? There is a proposed meeting for the 15th. There was one meeting of leaders that was uh, about a week ago. There's another meeting proposed for the 15th, mm -hmm. and we well, look at- 15th of June, that sounds like as soon as possible. It's pretty, yeah, It's we need to move fast. We've really only ignited this effort for a couple of weeks, but uh, we don't re really want the uh, the energy to fizzle. Well, with that, we're coming right down to the end of the show. So I just want to remind everyone, recall McGinn at groups.facebook.com. If this is something that interests you, go to it, find out more. Maybe it's a group for you. We'll see you right here on Public Exposure next week. Take care. Great. Wow. Thanks. That show zoomed by. It did. I thought we were just at the break.